Yes, half-time scoreline in Limerick then, one that we certainly didn't anticipate at this stage in the match. Tipperary winning 1-10 to Limerick's four points. All of those points coming from freeze. Just another scoreline, by the way, in the championship from last night. Uh, the Connacht final, Galway won that on a scoreline of 3-19 to Roscommon's 2-10. However, the game that we're concentrating today on, of course, is that monster final. For a tip supporter, Cyril, it's been a great first half. For a Limerick supporter, a nightmare, and I suppose for the neutral, a bit of a bemusement. Well, Tipperary were very happy. Supporters were very happy, like, because it's a great display, and it's their best display so far this year. They're hungry, they're forced to the ball, and let the ball do the work. For the Limerick uh, people, Tom Ryan and company over the team, like, it's a nightmare after having trained so hard and seeing lads say missing line balls, mm -hmm. miss hit and freeze, all, everything that could go wrong, going wrong, is going to take, it's a long road back at this stage. Sure, just to correct myself there, 1-11 of course is a score, a 10 point uh, difference in the match at half time down there. Let's have a look at some of the incidents sir, from this and I suppose when things were tight in the first 5-10 minutes, the tip goal kind of was the first big breakthrough for them. Yeah, well, the Tipperary Minters went for broke. The pick Declan Ryan full, full forward and he's in there to do kind of a, a strong job. This is a good batting down ball here. Comes here now to Michael Cleary, just floats in a lovely ball. Declan Ryan goes high up here, just catches a turns and a great hand pass across here to Liam Cahill. No better man to stick it than Cahill. He could be a future star like you know, Fran Bellingary. Great traditional spot for her and that's a goal. That puts them 1-2 to a pint up at that stage. It's, they were on top but it's the goal they wanted to set sure. All of a sudden, rather than being a pint in it, there's four pints in it and it, it makes a terrible difference. And from here on, they were starting to float. Watch Declan Ryan here, catches that ball with, gnashes out from him, catches, takes a tackle or two which he's good at, hand passes out, Cahill steadies and a great flick right across, gives Joe Quaid no chance, Joe's a good goal, no chance with that ball at all, great goal. Well the tip forwards doing their stuff but the Limerick forwards by contrast, absolutely nothing being won up there. Yeah, well, the tip backs were tight and they were on top. The first few balls went in, the, the deep possessed fell is very easy, and Limerick missed hit balls. And it's a, from a lot of, say, missed hit balls by Limerick that uh, Tip are coming right into attack. You'll see some of it now when you see Declan, Declan Ryan's pine coming up here after a while. Like it's, it's, from, it's from a Limerick, here we have it here now. Like it's a Limerick ball going up front. Good low ball in. He, Tobin lose possession here. Uh, you know, it's, it's flicked out. Here's a fast ball by O'Mara. Good first touch. Just up in the volley straight away. Again, up goes Young Cahill this time. He provides Declan Ryan this time and a good ball over the bar. The ref may not have seen there. He actually dropped the hole, but that's the look at the draw. But their light was Young Cahill got on the ball, give a good hand pass to Declan Ryan. From a Limerick attack, it's, it's a tip point, and sure. that's the way it has been flown kind of all in the first half. Nothing has been going right for, for, for Limerick today. We saw an incident where there was a free that went directly into Michael Cleary's hands. He put it over the bar, and then their half backs, even, they were losing possession of the ball and, and giving them away as well. Yeah, well, like in the half back line, you'd expect the, the Limerick half back line usually to be on top. Young Foley's a good find, and, and Kieran Carey and, and David Clapper. Here now, you have David coming across, he's tackled, the ball breaks away. I think if Cahill again provides it out to John Lee, and John won't miss him kind of balls, stands back and tips it over the bar. Mm -hmm. But you'd have to admire the tip forwards, they're hunting in packs. The, the selectors win for broke picking the team. They left off, say, Nicky English, Pat Fox, say, Aidan Ryan, you know, as it, most people think would be on it. And they've gone for broke picking a team like this. Now, maybe they've been on some of this, the older guys in the second half, but they have been vindicated with, it, with what they've picked. Young Cahill again, the provider here, lovely hand pass, and John Lee, he tips it over the bar. They're letting the ball do the work, and it's doing it for them. Their first touch is good, whereas Limerick at the moment just can't seem to do anything right at all. When we were talking uh, before the transmission today, sir, about today's match, we were making the point, and I think most hurling supporters probably were, they didn't know what to make of Tipperary today. Tip probably didn't even know what to make of themselves. We've had the answer now, whatever happens. Yeah, well, they played Kerry. You see, Tip have kept searching and searching and searching. Like Father Tom Forty, uh, you know, the, the, and these two selectors, uh, Kennedy and, and Ken Hogan, they've kept looking for the right combination. They've, they have tried the league and even playing Galway in the league, even if they got beaten. They came out disappointed, but they were missing players and they're getting the links together. And like now they seem to have found the links today. O'Mara was unlucky to be dropped, I thought, for the league final as such. Back again now today. And, uh, you know, uh, Colonel Bonner has gone out there. Colin Bonner has made centre back his own. As I was saying yeah. before the transmission, it was a problem for, for Tipperary for years, centre back. And all of a sudden, they have a guy that's, play, you know, that's playing fantastic in it, you know. And like all the other backs are knitting in well. And like their full back line is probably as good as in the game mm -hmm. at the moment. But there's no pressure on them at the moment. It'll come in the second half because there is a strong breeze, but it's a mountain to climb. Limerick needs a few scores, they need a goal or two, but like even to take off fellas at half time, they're probably taking them off for taking off sake because like there's no one really playing well, tipper and top completely around the field. Sure. Well, we heard Liam Lenahan there before the, uh, the break anticipating changes in the Limerick forward line. They're bringing on Mike Galligan, that's uh, a certainty. What can Mike add to this situation now? Well, there Mike, he is. Mike, Mike is a player that can get scores. Like, you know, he's kind of a player on the breaks and he's good to score points. But, like, someone has to make the breaks. Like, some of the other mm -hmm. Limerick players will have O'Neill to. O'Neill is the player gone off, by the way. Yeah, but they'll have to take the game by the scruff of the neck and go for broke. Like, you'd have to say at the moment, like, that tipper in the driving seat, it's, it's up to tip. And you can, if Limerick do come at them, you can expect one of the tip names, like English or Fox, to come on up front. OK, there's the referee then from Cork just noting the change. Let's go back for the second half then and see can Limerick turn this one around and rejoin Ger Canning. Thank you very much indeed. Yes, uh, welcome back here. And we have some news from Tony straight away. 
We have Ken Hogan with me. Ken, you must have been very pleased with that performance in the first half, but the first 10 minutes here are going to be vital. These 10 minutes are vital. We're looking forward and we're not looking back. We had a good first half. We didn't turn most of the superiority into scores. But we're going out in the second half and the fellas know the job is only half finished. We're going out for the second half. It's killer instinct the whole way and we've got to put Limerick away because they have the breeze, they have the hill down and we've got to be ready. So we're going out there ready for action. Thanks very much, Ken. Yes, a change has been made as you've noted. Uh, Mike Gallagher has come in for Shane O'Neill. And that half-time break must have been most interesting because Limerick only took a break of about six minutes. They were out fast. And here's a chance for their first point from play. And it is scored there by Owen O'Neill in the first attack of the second half. That brings the Limerick crowd to life here. This is exactly the start they needed. Yes, a great start again by Limerick. And it's interesting, Owen O'Neill has gone into full forward to take on Paul Shelley at this stage. And there's been a few changes around the field. Kieran Carey has gone to midfield with Mike Poole and going back in centre-back. So I'm, I'm sure they're looking for the Limerick players to surge forward in the second half. It's up to Limerick, no doubt about that. That's Sean O'Neill. That's won by Ramey Ryan, masterful. Liam McGrath trying to stop Sean O'Neill the second time. John Lahey, powerless to hold on to that one there. Comes to Gary Kirby, down around the middle of the field, driving it in, stopped by Brendan Cummins. Gary Cahill again, or Gary Kirby again, I should say. Here's Mike Gallagher. Can be a match winner. They need something special, but it's just inches to the right. Mike had a right good look at that one. Playing in his 19th championship match in the Limerick Colours, being marked by Brendan Carroll. This was the effort that fell for Mike Gallagher. Took the responsibility on himself there, but just outside the post. Dave Clark stayed back. It's forward by Liam McGrath. Tommy Dunn. The two Nashes there. Combining to deny Michael Cleary. Declan Nash. Now Steve McDonough. Ramey Ryan is under this one on the 65 metre line. Mike Gallagher. This one dropping it in towards Ono O'Neill. Now the new full forward. Paul Shelley back there. Good defensive work by Shelley. Sean O'Neill. Down and towards Podge Tobin. Now at top of the right. Against Michael Ryan. Trying to get through. Ball outside. Damien Quigley. Good block down by George Friend. Friend getting away with it. The kind of movement, the kind of clearance that brings the crowd to life. Dropped down by Mike Nash. He's been quite uncertain at full back this afternoon, Liam Cahill towards O'Mara low inside towards Tommy Dunn, Dunn looking for another score, trying to get through and in the end saved by Joe Quaid it was a difficult enough chance for Tommy Dunn there because the backs were in fairly quickly once he was in the clear yes here we see it again, the ball coming to Tommy Dunn, picks it well, goes through his defenders, but a great defensive play by McDonough there to get semi block in and the shot was thrown up by Joe Quaid. 65 to be taken by Michael Cleary from Era Oog in Nina. Against the breeze, looking for the first score of the second half for uh, Tipperary. And he puts it over and that's his own fourth point. One from play, two from freeze and now one from a 65. And it's won 12 to 5 points. Still very happy up there on the hill. Joe Quaid's puck out, wind assisted down towards Gary Kirby, who has to be the target really from those puck outs. Conal Bonner. Conal Omar in there doing some terrific work around midfield for Tipperary, really unsettling the Limerick duo. And as you heard, Mike Hula had moved out of that sector. He's gone to centre half back in a switch with Kieran Carey. Dave Clark to take this. Didn't really hit it all that well, but it reaches a Limerick man. It reaches Kieran Carey. Again, belting it for all he was worth down towards the city end. And that's Limerick six wide now, second for the second half. The, dif the difference there, Ger, in the first half was Tipperary were playing the ball in low to their inside forwards. We've seen Limerick now take him one or two pats of goal, maybe a bit of frustration, and hit the balls wide. 
There is the bones of a half an hour to go in this championship match. The monster title at stake. Place against the Ulster champions of the semi-final. Antrim are down. Gary Kirby. Trying to go around. Colin Bonner. Kirby into a cul-de-sac, really, but the referee saw him being fouled. That gives a free into Limerick. Limerick's tenth free of this match. And because Tip didn't retreat fast enough, it's been brought into a more favourable position. The Limerick fans will feel they need everything. Joe O'Leary laying down the law. It'll be Gary Kirby to hit this one. Giving it plenty of elevation. Knocking it over the bar. His fifth point. He scored all bar one of Limerick's tally so far. And all of his scores, of course, coming from Freeze. Sean O'Neill sees the one sail over his head. Mark Foley back there, his left half back, helping him out. Challenged, he left it behind. Liam McGrath in towards Declan Ryan. Nicely down for Michael Cleary. Tip in full flight to Tommy Dunn. And that's gone over the bar. And there we perhaps saw the essential difference between the teams. Good teamwork as opposed to individualism. And then an awareness of what to do at the end of all of that. Great play by Declan Ryan there. I saw Michael Cleary coming running through. And when I looked at Michael Cleary, he was going to take a shot himself. Put the off to Tommy Dunn. And a great score. But that came from possession. Again, be given away by Mark Foley there, the Limerick defender, when he lost possession. And Limerick have made the one change we mentioned at half-time. I suspect they would have wished to have made more. Declan Ryan. Limerick backs reeling backwards. Here's Cahill. And that's... Gone to the right. First one that got astray this afternoon for the youngster. Well, how good is it is to be able to bring players in from the minor grade from last year and straight into the senior championship team. We really have a fine tier, I think. Yes, again, Declan Ryan. Great vision by Declan Ryan to see Liam Cal on alone, Digi Square. Maybe should have hit it first time rather than coming around. Limerick have a player down injured. It seems to be Steve McDonough. Dunner from uh, Brewery, playing today in his 10th championship match. I wonder what happened to cause that injury. Dr Dave Boylan is in there attending. Frankie Carroll is being prepared. But Frankie would be coming in around midfield or half forward, not in the corner back position. There's Frankie standing by, ready to make his entrance. But that's been a very unsure-looking Limerick full-back line this afternoon. Yes, and um, the service and the distribution of the ball in, into the Tipperary full-forward line has been excellent, and you must give credit to the outfield fair players for that. OK, the inside forwards are taking their chances very well, but great supply of the ball. Well, there was a clash there, we just caught a quick glimpse of it there, as Declan Ryan went after that. And clearly Steve McDonough came off second best. It gives me an opportunity to say... Hello to uh, Paddy Keller, who heads from, hails from Fedamore in County Limerick. His relations are here watching this match this afternoon. I suspect they're not one bit pleased the way things are going, however, Paddy, but uh, hope you're well. Dave Mahidi there and Dave Boylan. Dave Boylan on the left. Former Middleton hurler himself. Just making sure that McDonough's OK, not concussed. <laughs> Sympathetic round of applause. He's playing on. Joe Quaid with the puck out. Colin Bonner back there, but it's Brendan Carroll instead who knocks it away. But only as far as Sean O'Neill in towards Damien Quigley. Quigley is yet to score in this match and really yet to threaten in any sort of way. And that one there was... Uh, in and carried over the end line. I think a bit of the debate, the umpire put up his hand for a 65 and I think the referee has gone into way void. To me it looked like the, the ball was wide. So Joe O'Leary overruling his uh, umpire 